Amen. Amen. Um, when Jocelyn asked me to come on and speak, it was one of those days, as many of you I'm sure have those days, you probably have had that day today where it's super busy, you have things going on, you're trying to figure out everything. But when she asked me, I was so grateful. And the, the message the Lord put on my heart in that moment was for us to hold on by letting go. Mm. Hold on by letting go. And so there's three scriptures that we're gonna look at this evening. And if we have three volunteers, the first one's gonna be Matthew 10, 39. Matthew 10, 39. The second one is a little bit longer. So somebody who doesn't mind reading, it's Philippians 2, six through 11. And the last one is gonna be Revelation 3, 21. I'll read those again. That first one is gonna be Matthew 10, 39. The second one, which is a little bit more lengthy, is Philippians 2, 6 through 11. And the last one will be Revelation 3 and 21. And so if the first person can read 1039, then we'll start there. And then I'll ask you when we need the next one. So is anybody ready to do that first one? Yeah. Matthew 10, okay. 39. It yes. reads, whoever finds the life will lose it. And whoever loses their life for my sake, we'll find it. So when we talk about holding on by letting go, what the Lord has put on my heart is particularly when I left World Harvest, we the last time we literally met in person. I mean, some of you, we saw each other at the house and Kaylin's birthday party, but the biggest time before I left was in the middle of a pandemic. We had mm. a drive by, we were distancing, we had on masks, we were loving on each other, but from a distance. And so what God is teaching me in this season is that as we come to the close of eternity, there are going to be things that we're going to deal with. Who knew we were going to go through a pandemic? Who knew we would be dealing with that? We don't know what we're going to face. Some of us on this call, Jocelyn and others lost loved ones, mother, father-in-law, grandmother. We lost relationships relationships. Some of us lost jobs as we knew it. We had to embrace a new normal and we're still dealing with that. You know, mm -hmm. forget if that, forget that there was even a pandemic, just life period. Mm -hmm. L-I-F-E, life is not easy. And so no matter where we are in life, the challenge is how do I hold on? How do I hold on to your unchanging hand? I would imagine that all of us on this line have either been introduced to Christ, we've, you know, have some familiarity with Christ. The very fact that we're on a line on a Thursday night, there's a basketball game coming on in a few minutes, but we're here is saying something about our desire to hold on, about our desire to not want to let go of the unchanging hand of Christ. We know he's faithful. We know he's good. We know he's on the throne. We know all these things, but we have, we, add, we need God to help us to hold on on because we have death in the family. We have illness. I had right before I got on this call, I got a text message from the lady who planned my wedding, Shirley Cooper. I don't know if you all met her, if she ever came to Houston, but she literally directed my wedding. This woman is, is one of the closest people in my life. When I was a little girl, she would have me and my friend Sharice come over her house, spend the night, do our hair. We'd have sleepovers, had a wonderful time. She was like a young adult woman in my life. In my life. And her husband has stage four cancer. He's been in Texas back and forth at treatment centers. And she just texted us last night and said, pray for him because he's tired and he wants to let go. This man is not even probably 60-ish. We're talking about a young adult person who is in the throes of a diagnosis. So we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the future holds. But God is telling us to hold on by letting go. So that first verse that, that Jocelyn read, that Matthew 39, it says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. This scripture has always just blown my mind. It's like a, a paradox, like a juxtaposition. It's like a contrast because he's saying, if you cling to your life, you're actually going to lose it. So there's something about the human experience that the more we try to control things, we actually lose things in the spirit realm. So in the natural realm, when you try to hold tight, 
to yourself, to your ideas, to what you think matters, to relationships. When you try to control things and figure absolutely everything out, God cannot even get in and you actually may end up losing that which you're trying to hold on so tightly to. In the spirit realm, God is saying that I need you to loosen your grip so that I can come in and I can take over. In order for you to truly hold on, you've actually got to let go. If you cling to your life, you will actually lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. So let's read that second, that second passage because that's going to tell us how biblically we actually begin to let go. Who has that Philippians 2, 6, two, to, 11? six to 11? I have it. Okay. okay. All right. Hi. Okay. Hey. Philippians 2, <laughs> 6 through 11. I'm reading from the New International Virgin, Version. Excuse me. Who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, <laughs> every knee should bow in mm. heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord mm -hmm. to the glory of God, the Father. Mm. Mm, beautiful. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. So in this particular passage, so the first passage, we talked about the, just the complexity of what does it mean to hold on by letting go. Now we're actually going to see by looking at Jesus Christ, actually spiritually, how do we let go? So we know that in order to hold on to the person we actually know we need, we've got to let it go. So how do I let go? Well, we let go by looking at Christ. And this is a template. It's a literal framework. When you walk through 6 through 11, particularly 6 through 9, it shows you how Jesus held on by letting go. And so the acronym tonight that I'm going to put forth is funny because it's actually who, but I'm switching the letters around. It's going to be how. So it's actually H-O-W. How do I let go? So if we look at verse 6, he says, though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Now, if anybody could cling to their position, if anybody could cling to what they have, if anybody could cling to their personhood, it would be Jesus Christ. It would be God, the father and the son, mm -hmm. because he's God. But it says that he knows he knows he's equal with God, the father. He is God, but he didn't consider it something to be grasped. He knows he's God. But look at verse seven. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. Now I know as black people, we don't like that term, but it says he took the position of a slave and was born as a human being. So that's the first part with the H. The first part is the humility. How do we literally hold on by letting go? We let go by number one, the humility. What Jesus Christ did is he gave up his divine privileges. Well, we don't have divine privileges, but as human beings created in the image of God, he's given us power of choice. I could decide that I'm going to run my own life mm -hmm. and God will not stop me. He gives us a divine, he gives us a prerogative to live our own life. He has given us dominion. And so we have a, we have a choice. We can choose to run the show. We can choose to run our own life, but Jesus Christ, the son of God, Jesus Christ in heaven, who had angels bowing before him, crying, holy, holy, holy. Jesus Christ, who had complete communion with his father, he decided to humble himself. In other words, he let go of his position. And that is the first way that we hold on by letting go. We literally have to humble ourselves. What does that mean? I had a spiritual teacher years ago named Stephanie, wonderful woman of God. And she I would be in her Bible study. And she literally told us that letting go, humility is literally letting go of what you think you know about everything. You let go of what you even think you know about God. Mm -hmm. Wipe the slate clean so he can pour back into you. Because some of us think we know it all. Some of mm -hmm. us think we have it all. God is saying, let go, humble yourself. It's literally like a death. Humility is literally 
like a death. It's like lying in the casket and everything I think, everything I want, everything I'm planning, I have surrendered it to God. I have crucified myself with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Humility is what Jesus Christ did when he took on humanity and the body and humility is what we do in our flesh to say god i completely let go mm -hmm. and so that's that gets difficult because that means that you let go of what you think about that relationship mm -hmm. sometimes you want to cling so tight to it you want to make it work you want to figure it out you've invested so much into it and i'm not saying it won't work i'm just saying you've got to let it go yeah in the spirit you've got to say god i'm letting go of the outcome I can't control that person. I can't control what they do. I can't control their choices. I can't control my employer. I can't control what's happening here. I can't control the diagnosis. But God, I completely humble myself. I completely let go. That is the first step in holding on and letting go is when you are not even in the picture anymore. You have literally died. You have literally crucified with Christ. It's like the story where one man was talking to another man a preacher and this man told the preacher he said somebody threatened the preacher and said i'm gonna kill you some type of type of threat you know nowadays people are threatening people of anything you could be in the walmart parking lot and you could be parked in the wrong spot somebody will pull out a gun it's just those type of days which we, in which we live but this preacher said this man said something about he was gonna kill him and the preacher said you can do what you want because i'm already dead i'm already dead i've been crucified with christ i don't live anymore the life which I now live, I live by faith in the son of God. I'm not even here. I have renounced self. Self is gone. I am gone. I have humbled myself. And that's literally the first step. The second step is the O, oh, because we're talking about how. How do I do this? So H-O-W, the first step is humility. That second step, if we go to verse eight, it's, well, let me, let, me go, let me go back to seven and, and then ease on into eight. Seven says, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble possession, that's humility, of a slave and was born as a human being. Look at verse eight. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God. That's the O right there. That is the obedience. When after we humble ourselves, because I'm not in the picture anymore, because I'm not running the show anymore, it's not my agenda anymore, it's God's agenda. So once I have let go in the humility, the next step is now I'm completely surrendered, God. I'm completely open in my heart to you and I will obey you. Oh my God, I don't live anymore. You live in me. And so what I'm doing next is I'm obeying you. Whatever you say, well, what did it mean for Jesus Christ? It meant that he was going on a cross. The God of heaven, perfection, the creator of the world, the one who speaks and things come to pass, the one who created us and sustains us every single day. He was going on a cross. Now, you know, it wasn't easy for him because in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, God, can you let this cup pass? But he said, nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. In other words, God, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. I am humbling myself and I'm going to be obedient. That's how you hold on by letting go. You humble yourself, God. We humble ourselves before you and we are obedient no matter what it looks like. I can't write the script. I don't know what he's going to do next. I don't know what's going to happen in a year. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know that I can hold on if I let go. When we don't let go, God can't get in. There's no room for him. When we don't let go and we want to run the show, he literally cannot get in. So we're trying to hold on and say, God, I want you to do this thing. But while we're holding on, we're actually, we're, while we're trying to keep our grip, he can't get a grip. So God is saying, humble yourself, obey me. And then that W, that W is at the very end of verse eight. So after it says, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. That W is willingness. I am willing to do what you have me to do, God. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what it feels like. 
I can't figure this thing out. It's a new normal. Everybody that I love is no longer around me. I feel like I'm alone, but God, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to obey you. And I'm going to say, God, I am willing to do it your way. I surrender my life to you. I am willing for you to have my life, God. Take my life and let it be totally surrendered to me. Those are the hardest steps in the world, but the beauty of it all is what happens in verse nine. Look what Jesus did. When Jesus was, Jesus came and Jesus took on this mission. He took on the mission to take on a body to leave heaven. For us, he took on a body. He, he humbled himself. He became obedient to death on a cross. He was willing to do it whatever God, whatever way he had to do it. But look what came at the end in verse nine. It says, therefore, do you still have your Bible open um, to read verse nine again? Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place Ooh, and gave God. him the name that is above every name. You want me to continue on number 10? Yes, go to go all the way to 11. Okay, that at the name of Jesus, every yeah. knee should bow in the heavens and on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. So what he's saying in Philippians 2, verse 9. So after, you know, after everybody, wants, everybody wants to see the glory. You know, we like to see that Jesus is high and lifted up. Jesus is sitting, you know, he's sitting on the seat and, and the chair. But we like the glory. We, we know we like the glory of people. We like to see that, oh my goodness, this person has this, this, this accolade and this person is in this position and this person has this degree and oh my goodness, this person is on this stage and this person has this many followers. We like to see the glory, but we don't know the person's story. We don't know the person's story. We don't know all they had to do to get through. We don't know all they've dealt with to get where they are. We don't know the tears that they cry at night. We don't know the loneliness that they have to endure. We don't know the internal inner workings and the confusion and the, all that they deal with. We don't know the story. We just want to love people's glory. It's the same with Jesus Christ. Jesus is saying, did you see me in the garden of Gethsemane? Did you see me? with tears like blood, almost like blood, with Desire of Ages talks about, by Ellen G. White, it talks about the intense battle he endured to the point where he said, Father, if it be thy will, can you remove this cup? It was difficult. He did not want to go through with it because it was difficult. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will. He humbled himself, that's the H. He was obedient to death. And then he was willing to do it even on a cross. He said, this is humility. I mean, this is, Oh, I'm opening myself to you, God, and I'm going to do it your way on a cross. Which was the most crazy way for the son of God to even die. But he is saying in that first thing, if you don't want to lose your life, then Jesus is saying, you're not worthy of me. If you want to, to party with me, if you want to have victory with me, if you want to be exalted with me and elevated with me, then you got to take up your cross and follow me. You can't hold on to your life. You've got to lose your life for my sake and then you will find it. But just like Jesus, as Jesus did the how, the H, the, the O and the W, after he did that in verse nine, it says, therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor. Now, you know, when Jesus was on the cross, it was dark for him. He couldn't even see his way. He said, why have you forsaken me? He bore the sins of the earth. There was a darkness there and he could not see it. And that's where some of us are right now tonight. There's a darkness we can't penetrate. We can't see how things are gonna work out. We can't figure out how God is gonna make ends meet financially. There may be a relationship that you cannot figure out. You've done everything you could and you don't know what else to do. There may be a, a situation that you're dealing with in your body, but God is saying, Jesus is saying, I, just as I followed, I need you to follow. And so what we have to do tonight is we have to hold on by letting go. And in the letting go, we completely let God take over and then we will be exalted with him. That's the last scripture we have to read tonight. That's the revelation. Who has that revelation? That's Revelation 3, 21. All right. To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to the seat with me on my on my throne, 
just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne, whoever has ear, let them hear what the spirit says to the churches. It's not going to be easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus. He had to die on a cross. And as followers, we have a cross to take up take up my cross and he says, take up your cross and follow me. But on the other side is victory. So if you can say tonight, God, I'm going to hold on by letting go. I'm going to do it how? By humility, through obedience and willingness to do it your way. Then you will be exalted, my sister. You will be exalted, my brother. You may not see it right now. You may not see it in the natural. You may not see it tomorrow, but it's coming. It's coming. It's a promise from God. He says, those who are victorious, and what does that victory look like? It looks like me dying to self. It looks like me letting go and saying, God, you got to put your, your robe, your robe of righteousness over me. I need your robe of righteousness over me. And then we are victorious, not in ourselves. We are victorious when we let go, because when we let go, then Jesus can come in. It says, those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne. Hallelujah. Just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. I just came to encourage you tonight. Oh my goodness, I love this community. I love you all. I miss you all so much. And I'm thankful to God that even though we're miles apart, we are still next to each other in, in the body of Christ and we are still together in the faith. Mm -hmm. And so no matter what happens on this side of glory, no matter what happens, we are all gonna hold on by letting go. Father, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, God, we bless your name. We love your name. We love you, God. We thank you for your example. We thank you, Jesus, that you thought enough of us to actually give up your divine privileges, Father, mm. to humble yourself and to become obedient and willing to die even on a cross, God. Father, we don't know what crosses we have to take up. Some of us have crosses right now, persecution right now, situations we're dealing with right now. God, help us to hold on by letting go, letting go of self, letting go of control and trusting you, God, to take over and be God. And we thank you that if we do that by faith, you will exalt us in due time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.